Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous. It keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Reverend Dr. David Binden on the Good Life Devotion brought to you by the Mega Light Mission, the church for this generation. You are welcome to today's special episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. Binden. This week on the Good Life Devotion, Dr. Pinden brings you teachings from a previous edition of the New Creation Conference. Get ready with your Bible, notebook, and pen to receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. So that what will happen? Read the last one. That ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. We saw the fullness of Christ. Now here, if you read the uh, marginal construction, you may think that here, you say, when you do this, then you might go, the fullness of God will fill you. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying is that when you do this, the fullness of God will be realized in you. It means there is already the fullness of God in you. But it is when you understand love perfectly, then that fullness will become a reality. It will be something that it can be realized. It, it, will, it will be fulfilled. That's the right word. That the fullness of God in you will be fulfilled when you come to comprehend with all sins the length, the breadth, height, and depth of the love of God. Love is the greatest subject in the Bible. And so the fullness of God cannot be expressed in your life if you don't understand love. That's what I said. Because some people, if they know they can do everything, they will kill people every day. They will destroy the whole system. If somebody doesn't know and says, he says evil about you, immediately at once they will die. So if the fullness of God starts expressing in you that way, the whole world will change in one day. So he said, it is when you understand the fullness of love, the fullness of God will be realized. It's already in you. If you do a study of that verse. So the fullness of Christ... The fullness of God. Now it's like with what? The fullness of the Holy Ghost. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. You see, before the New Testament, in the Old Testament, people never had the fullness of the Holy Ghost. They had the Spirit by measure. So, the Spirit will come upon a prophet or a minister to do a particular work and go again. So, they didn't have the full measure of the spirit. But when the time was drawing nearer, God began to show us that the fullness of the spirit is in sevenfold. Because he was pointing to Jesus who will come in the fullness of the spirit. So, if you read, let's let's, let's, let's look at it in scripture. Let's um, look at the prophecy first. You go to um, the book of Zechariah. The book of Zechariah. Let's take it from chapter 4 and look at some three verses in that book. Zechariah chapter 4. Let's start from verse 2. If you take it from verse 1, you understand. And the angel that talked with me came again and walked me as a man that is awakened out of his sleep. Verse 2. And said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, that's a prophetic looking, a candlestick of gold, a candlestick all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it. 
and his seven what lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top there. So there were seven lamps with seven pipes. I get in that. Now look at the interpretation that was given to Zechariah. Verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit Say yes, the Lord of hosts. In other words, the seven lambs that you saw, he was trying to tell you that it is going to be by my spirit. So the spirit was shown to the prophet as seven lambs. He was trying to communicate a message about the sevenfold dimension of the spirit, which is the fullness of the personality of the Holy Spirit. Are you following? Let's go to Revelations. Revelations chapter 4, verse 5. We saw seven lamps and he interpreted it as the Holy Ghost. Let's go. Verse 5. One to go. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were what? Seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. And what are they? Which are the seven spirits of God. So the interpretation is clear here that the seven lamps he showed to Zechariah and interpreted to him that it is a spirit. In one verse, we are shown that the seven lamps actually refer to the spirit. Again, he shows Zechariah in the same Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4, let's go to verse 10. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. For who have despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. He was still talking about the seven lambs. Then he said, They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole world. So the seven are the eyes of the Lord running through the whole world. This was also representing the seven dimensions of the spirit. The eyes of the Lord. Go to Revelation 5, 6. Revelation 5, verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having what? Seven horns, and seven eyes again. Did you see that? And what are they? Which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the world. Are you following? He's introducing prophetically the seven dimensions of the spirit. Then the prophecy comes about Jesus in Isaiah and says that Jesus is going to come in the fullness of the spirit. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. Let's take it from verse 1. Hey, yeah. He says, there, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesus. That's talking about David. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. So, who is the branch here? Jesus. Keep that in your mind. Branch is Jesus. Verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So he lists seven dimensions of the spirit. Spirit of lordship, wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, and might that means power, then knowledge and of reverence for God. This is talking about Jesus. So he said, when Jesus comes, you are not going to have just a portion of the spirit but the seven spirits. So Jesus is the one with the seven spirits. In other words, the seven, the completeness, the fullness of the spirit. Revelation 3, 1. Revelation 3, 1. And unto the angel of the church inside is right. These things says he that has the seven spirits. Who was the one giving the revelation? Jesus. John said the revelation which God gave to his son. Who gave to John? So Jesus is giving the revelation. Let's start again. And unto the angel of the church 
in sight is right. These things said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and are dead. So Jesus had the seven spirits. And the word have them means he is in possession. He possesses the seven spirits. So Jesus came and he was not going to have part of the spirit. For instance, look at Samson. In Samson's life, the spirit of might was at work. But the spirit of wisdom was not at work. Because the Bible says that a man who sleeps the hallowed is not wise. So he was operating in might, but without wisdom. There was no fear of the Lord. So he could do anything immoral. Because at that time, there was no completeness of the spirit. So you see somebody operating, the prophets, they spoke by the spirit of the Lord, lordship, authority, that says the Lord. They didn't care about kings. They would speak the voice of the Lord. But sometimes they didn't act in wisdom and all that. But for Jesus, the Bible said that he, he, he possesses the seven spirits. Are you following this? Now, if Jesus is possessing the seven spirits, John testifies and says that he that the Lord sends, he does not give him the spirit by measure. Which means Jesus came with the fullness of the spirit. Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Now the term changes from the spirit came upon to being full of the spirit. So in the Old Testament, all you hear it, and the spirit came mightily upon. The spirit came upon. The spirit came upon. It was not the fullness of the spirit. Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Look for verse 1 now. Ha, ah, begin. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was what? Full of the Spirit. The word full, that means is pleres. To be totally replete. There's no room left. He was the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Now, it was not only about Jesus. Now, as he is, as it is, there were similar prophecies about us. Remember, Jesus was the seed of Abraham. Today, the Bible says, if you are in Christ, you are the seed of Abraham. Are you following? Good. Jesus was the branch. Today, the Bible says that he is the vine. You are the branch. Now, Jesus is the stone that the builder stumbled. But today, we are living stones. No, let me show you. Glory. Receiving Jesus results in much more than being saved. The coming of Jesus was salvation plus fulfillment of eternal plan. So the full gospel is the gospel of salvation plus the message of God's eternal plan. If someone receives Jesus, he's not only saved, but God's eternal plan of making him his begotten son is accomplished. This was the adoption he was talking about. Theology has told us that we were human and we just got adopted. No. Divine adoption, he doesn't only bring you, but he imparts his life. So when you do DNA tests of me and DNA tests of Papa God, you have the same results. I am his begotten son. Your nature is the fullness of life. You don't have any less life than Papa God. Papa God has the life. The Holy Ghost has the life. Jesus has the life. I have the life. As he is, so am I. Oh, hallelujah. Shout glory. Wow. Wonderful brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'm excited to specially invite you for the New Creation Conference this year, 2019. The previous years have been amazing. And we know without a doubt that this year can only be better. At the New Creation Conference, you get to discover from the scriptures who you are in Christ to exhibit the divine life that is in you. This is why you cannot miss the New Creation Conference this year. This year is happening at the National Theatre in Accra on the Thursday 21st and the Friday 22nd of November. It is 5.30 p.m. each evening. You cannot miss it. 
you must be there and your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. Shout glory! Glory! Let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2. Let's take it slowly from verse 4. 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2. Let's go from verse 4. To whom? Coming as unto what? A living stone. Disallowed of man, but chosen of God. And precious. Ye also as lively stone, the word is living stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer our spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So we are now living stones built upon the stone. Are you following? So he is the stone, we are the living stones. Go to Zechariah chapter 3. And so we saw the prophecy about Jesus. We are now looking at the prophecy about us. Are you in Zechariah 3? 8. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellow that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. <laughs> for behold, I will bring forth my servant. What is he? The branch. He was the same branch in Isaiah chapter 11. And today, he is the vine, you are the branch. Verse 9. For behold, what? The stone. He was the stone that the builders rejected in First Peter. That I have laid before Joshua. That's Israel. Now read the remaining part. And upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Now he didn't say upon the stone. We are not the living stones. And upon one stone, upon each of the stones, on the stone shall be seven eyes. What are the seven eyes? The seven spirits of God. So the fullness of the spirit was prophesied about us. Before we came. Then Jesus died and rose again. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13. He says. By one spirit are we all baptized. Into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Uh, born or free. And have been made to drink. Into the spirit. We have been made one with the Holy Ghost. Not a portion of the spirit. So the spirit is a person now. We are made one. In 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He that is joined to the Lord is what? Aya, 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 aya. We are one with the spirit. Who is the spirit? The Holy Ghost. And that is talking about the fullness of the spirit. Now, John 3, 35. Look at what they told Jesus. When John was talking. And look at yourself. John 3, verse 34 rather. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. And what has happened? For God given not the spirit by measure to him. So he doesn't give just a portion. No. If God, the one God sent, he was talking about Jesus. He says, that person has the completeness of the Holy Ghost. Now, as he is, as he is, John, John chapter 20, He that God sends, right? He's the one who has the fullness of the spirit. Then said Jesus unto them again, the disciples. Peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, so send I you. In the same way that the father sent me, I also send you. So if the father sent Jesus for a mission, and that mission required the fullness of the spirit, and he said, the same way the father has sent me, I have also sent you. Then what measure of the spirit do you have? Fullness of the spirit. What does that mean now? That means that like Jesus, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, is what is in you. Now look at this. Look at this as we round up. Now, you don't have the spirit of wisdom. You don't have the spirit of mind. You are, you are, eh, it is not that you were given. Now, you are the expression of lordship. 
you don't have the spirit of wisdom your life is the expression of wisdom so the world looks at your life and they see wisdom at work that's why i say christ is made unto us wisdom we are wisdom personified the world doesn't need to go anywhere to learn the wisdom of life we are wisdom living we don't have counsel we are counsel personified now it's the same thing we don't have understanding we are understanding personified we don't have might which means power we don't have power we are power Oh, hey. so all for a born again all the fastings for anointing and running here for anointing and a double portion anointing and a triple portion anointing is level of understanding the born again doesn't have power he is power in person now Power is not felt. Power is not felt. You think, okay, if I'm power, oh, then I should feel some way. No, power is known. We know power. We don't feel power. The manifestations of power can be felt. But power is a person. Didn't you, yesterday, the personality of God's power and presence is the Holy Ghost. And now I am one with this personality. Listen, you don't need any power from anywhere to accomplish anything under the sun. If you know that as he is, so are you. You will wake up knowing that I am power walking. I am power walking. Now, if I am power walking, what happens to demons? What happens to things of the world? I am power. I don't need power. That is the reality about you. And now, look at the, as I love the last verse. The third verse. Thank you so much. Let's give the Lord in my hand clap as we take our seats. As I 11. Look at what he said. I'll take it from verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and mind. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding. And in the fear of the Lord. And what shall happen? So it says that now that you are full of the spirit. It's not your work. The spirit will make you of quick understanding. And what will be the results? Read it with me. And he shall not judge after his eyes. Neither reproof after the hearing of his ear. That is where the de- not the devil. Lack of knowledge has killed many people. Now that you are the personification of the spirit. He says you shall not judge. You shall not make decisions based on what you see. You shall not decide, reprove based on what you hear. They are saying. What have the doctors said? What has government said? What have the new news said? He said, you don't report based on what you hear. It's a calling to a supernatural living. Not based on sensual living. He doesn't judge based on what he sees. <sighs> because as I'm sharing with you, a lot of you are thinking about your life. You are judging based on what you feel. What you see, I told you, I've ceased to live by the central nervous system. The doctors will say, say, la, as long as you are, they, they will say, as long as you are a human being, I'm not a human being. He said, you can't move your leg if the brain doesn't talk. <laughs> Who said the brain is needed to move a leg? Where was the brain in the grave? It was a spirit that moved the body. Hey, hey, hey. He shall make him of quick understanding. He shall not judge. After he said, in rounding up, there's something that is, is so interesting as we leave this conference to take note of the fact that Christianity is a calling of mankind to embrace the supernatural living. A living beyond the senses. That is all. The things I've shared with you over these two days. They, they are in your Bible. Get the messages and go to the, the, the scriptures. But 
the excitement about them is not the end. It says, the fullness of the spirit, he shall make him of quick understanding. He shall not judge after his sight, nor reproved after his hearing. Hallelujah. If you have been watching me on this episode, you see, it, with what you have understood, what should prevent you from becoming born of God? That is God's aim. You were never made human to remain human forever. You were made human to be adopted as God's son. And the means for your adoption has already been accomplished by Jesus Christ who died and was raised from the dead. So by his death and resurrection, he made that life available. All you need to do is believe it that by his death and resurrection, that life is available. And then declare him as Lord. When you do that, in the realm of the spirit, the Holy Ghost will take hold of your spirit and take the human life out and put into you the divine life. And you'll be someone who is born of God. And you will step into this amazing life that we are enjoying in Christ. Why don't you make this confession after me and receive the life of God and be born again? Say this after me if that's what you want to do. Say, dear Lord Jesus, with all my heart I believe that by your resurrection from the dead, you made eternal life available. Jesus, I declare you as Lord of my life. And by this confession, I receive this life into my spirit. And I am born again. Hallelujah. If you are this with all your heart, truly, you are born again. Thank you for watching the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan, brought to you by the Megalite Mission. To fellowship with any of our branches near you, call 055 792 7744. Follow Dr. David Bendan on Facebook by simply liking the Good Life Devotion page and the David Bendan Life page and receive daily nuggets to enable you exhibit God's divine life in you. Also, watch previous episodes of the Good Life Devotion on YouTube on the Dr. David Bendan channel and you will be blessed. Visit our website today and have access to life-transforming teachings and materials by Dr. David Bendan and Mrs. Cindy Bendan. Your life will never be the same. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bendan. Life is good. Enjoy.